going to do in the area of process control. Now, unlike the other experiments that you are going to do, you already have a background. For example, you are going to do experiments in reaction engineering. You already know about reaction engineering. You have done a course in reaction engineering, am I right? Yes, sir. So, something, some 5% residues will be there about reaction engineering still after the MCM. Hmm. Right? You still remember RTD. What is RTD? <laughs> oh, wow. Right. So, so many of you know it. Okay, so what I am going to do is, unfortunately, in the new curriculum, the process control course runs parallel with this lab. And whatever you are going to do as experiments in process control is completely different from what you have been studying till now. Okay? So it's not that it's it's uh, a simple extension uh, and then you can just follow up even if it is running in parallel. The course runs in parallel and the concepts that are introduced are completely new. So uh, I'm going to give a lecture, almost one to one and a half hour. It's going to be a long lecture. Without this lecture, it's very difficult to perform those experiments. You will not understand what is happening. Now, these experiments which are designed for this particular lab, they actually span entire course. Which means, you need to know what is taught in the beginning, you need to know what is taught in the middle, you need to know what is taught in the end. It is not that, you know, if you just do first one month and then you know what to do. So you need to know everything about this course if you want to do these experiments. So it's a tough task for us instructors because you do not know the topic and yet you have to do experiments and this is difficult. So what I am going to do is uh, hash course on I'm going to do a crash course on control. <laughs> Hello. Okay. So I'm going to do a crash course on control. Uh, so it's it's process controls for dummies, and uh, it's a tough class for me also because I have to cover everything that you're going to study in next. One full semester, it's almost 40 hours to be compressed in one and a half hour. Okay, but unless you have some idea about what is what is this uh, new game, you cannot perform those experiments. That's why you need this introduction. Without this, it's... So let me start with the motivation. Why do you need control? Why do I... See, let's, let's take uh, the most uh, important unit operation or unit process in chemical engineering. Let's take a CSTR. Okay, I have this CSTR with which is jacketed in which I am going to conduct some reaction. Well, like classical chemical engineer, I I say I am going to take A plus B is going to give me C plus B. I talk about whether about what is A, what is B, what is C, and what is D. This is some isothermic reaction. I am going to mix A and B and then I'm going to withdraw products. So this is a CSTR, so let's take it to be a, a closed reactor. I have A and B coming in here. So this is my, let's take liquid feed. This is B which is coming in here, okay? And these are my contents here. It's a well-stirred reactor, CSTR, and then I'm withdrawing products here at the bottom. Okay? So when you design the reactor, what do you do with designing the reactor? What is your main objective? Find the volume, right? So you find the volume under certain ideal conditions. Let's say this is an exothermic reaction. It's an exothermic reaction. It's important that you carry out the reaction at certain temperature and pressure. You have decided a priori in your design that temperature should be so and so, 400 degrees centigrade. Pressure should be some 15 atmospheres, whatever, whatever you have decided. 
the flow rate of A should be so much, flow rate of B should be so much. Well, if I exactly do whatever I decide in the design conditions, I'm going to get the product at the design specifications. I'll get a, you know, I'll get a split of C, B, A, and B coming out here in my product. And this will be perfect if all the conditions are perfect, which is almost impossible. So for example, I have a cooling jacket here. I have a cooling jacket here, and this is my coolant cooling water flow rate. Okay? So coolant is being flown out here. So this let's say this is my cooling coolant flow rate, which is coming, or cooling water flow rate. We are just using water. And we in design assume that water is available at 25 degrees centigrade or 20 degrees centigrade. Obviously, in, in the daytime, you probably have some two minutes where the water is exactly at 25 degrees centigrade. So, so water temperature is continuously fluctuating. So it's never at 25. Depending upon the season, it would be fluctuating between 15 to 20 or 20 to 25 or 25 to 30. Depending upon, I'm talking about the water in the sump, which is used for cooling. That temperature is never going to be constant. If it is never going to be constant, your flow rate, coolant flow rate, design coolant flow rate, is not going to give you the same cooling that you have, you are expecting, right? You are pumping at the same design flow rate. Water temperature, you know, coolant inlet temperature is changing. So this PC in is changing. If this is changing, if you keep pumping the fluid at the same design flow rate, you are making a mistake because it's not going to remove the heat the way you want it. Okay? Let's say A and B, A and B are two different reactants. Let's say A is something that you are adding to this reactor, B is coming from some other some other engine operation. Okay? If this engine operation is not operating perfectly, it's quite possible that flow rate of B, you wanted the flow rate of B to be certain kilo moles per hour, well, you have this desired value, actual flow rate of, you know, flow rate of B is actually fluctuating. It's fluctuating around, around this value, but it is not equal to this value. That's because there is something happening in the second unit, which is perturbing, which is perturbing the flow rate. It might be perturbing even the concentration of B in the, in the feed. And then there are perturbations here. So there is something which is beyond your control. Maybe you can control this flow rate precisely. But you cannot do anything about this because this is coming to some other unit. This, is, this unit is coming to some other unit. So there could be cascaded troubles. If trouble starts in one unit, it just propagates. It goes from one unit to other unit. And then you never have the flow rate of B exactly at the design value. It's almost impossible in real life. That's only design. You do it on the paper. But you cannot implement it. <coughs> When you implement it, you hope that it is equal, but actually it doesn't happen. It keeps fluctuating. So there are many such, many such. Uh, see, for example, you have this jacket designed here, and this jacket will have some, uh, you know, insulation, and then you will decide insulation thickness based on some UA delta D calculations, and then you'll assume that the atmospheric temperature for your delta D calculations is, you know, normally is 20 degrees, but actually it is not 20 degrees. Summer outside temperature is different, you know, winter it is different, night it is different, day it is different. So the heat loss to the atmosphere is continuously changing, and so this system is continuously in transient, it's in flux. And if you want to get what you, what you actually designed it for, you have to be on watch, you have to be on guard. So you have to be continuously monitoring the system, doing some interventions, and this is all managing the dynamics, managing the transient. Okay, so, I mean, if I compare, uh, uh, you know, design process and operation process, so design is like, you know, designing an aircraft. Designing an aircraft, you can do it using computer simulations, you can do it in things in lab, in different, different parts, you can design and they can assemble. But you have to fly there. Finally, you know, it has to operate. You have to go from one place to other place. And that's a different ball game than designing it on paper, manufacturing, putting it together. Okay, making it run is a different ball game. So process control deals with actually flying the aircraft, not just designing it. Okay. So we want to well, we don't fly aircrafts, we run reactors, we run chemical plants. 
Now, how do you control the reactor? What are things to be controlled here? What do you think is important? Is volume important? Is the volume inside? Is it important? Suppose the volume starts fluctuating. Will it give you the same conversion that you desired for? No. Right? You design the volume. You said the volume should be so much. But if there are slow fluctuations, the volume is not going to remain constant. The volume is going to fluctuate. Right? So what is it that you want to control inside? You want to control volume. In fact, I would say if the area of the cross section is constant, you want to control level inside. Right? I would want to maintain the level here. So this H is very, very important parameter for me. I have to, I have to maintain this at a constant, almost constant. If I can do that, then I will get desired conversions. Okay. Well, what about the other conditions? What, is, what else is important in, in reactor control? Operation of a reactor. Let's forget about our control. Temperature. I would like to maintain the temperature. Because this is an exothermic reaction, if I don't remove the heat properly, temperature might shoot up. If I remove it too much, okay, the temperature might drop. Both cases are detrimental for me as far as the operation is concerned. <coughs> so temperature is important. Pressure might be important. In some cases where products are gas phase products, so gas liquid reactions, important to maintain pressure here. Okay, what else? Purity of the product or split. Okay, I want to know what is concentration of C or what is concentration of D. So I want to I want to manage concentration, temperature, pressure, level, all of them simultaneously. All of them simultaneously. It's a tough job because everything affects everything. These four fluctuations they affect the concentration because they affect the concentration and volume. They affect temperature. Temperature affects concentration, all things are linked. And then, you know, managing this managing this reactor automatically is not a simple business. Now, uh, I'm not going to teach you today how to manage the reactor. Okay. When you start studying the topic, you actually create toy problems. Okay, in particular in control, we like to really create simple toy problems, understand those toy problems well, and then translate those ideas to more you know, complex situations. So I'm not going to look at reactor control in the beginning. I'm going to look at very, very simple problem. Okay. I'm going to look at the toy problem in which there is a tank and I want to just control level inside the tank. Let's not worry about concentration, pressure, temperature. Okay. I'm going to look at a very, very simplified problem. So this is an abstraction. which will help me to understand ideas and then once I look at a type problem, I can look at more complex problems later. Okay, so uh, this problem, we are going to strip off temperature, cooling, everything I am going to strip off. Let's take a very, very simple type problem. Okay, let me draw it again. Uh, so now I'm going to look at Okay? I'm going to look at a simplified problem in which I want to maintain level inside a tank. Most simple problem we can think of. Uh, very useful in explaining many, many concepts that you come across in control. Uh, or I would say transient management. Well, in most of the chemical engineering other courses that you study, you look at uh, steady state equations, you look at design problems, most of them. Okay? Uh, you rarely actually uh, come across models which are being used in design, which are transient models. That is mainly because most of our design is related to uh, design of continuous time systems, uh, batch time, batch reactor design or semi-batch reactor design would require 
uh, more complex dynamics to be considered. Now, here I'm going to look at uh, a common problem of maintaining level in any reactor. It could be storage, storage tank, it could be a reactor, it could be uh, you know, the type where you are actually uh, filling in the raw material or you are storing in the finished product. It could be anywhere. <laughs> so there is a flow in and flow out. So uh, there is a flow out here. Let me call this as flow in. And I'm going to call this as flow D. What is this for? There are two flows. Okay? There are two flows. This is, I'm calling this as a disturbance flow. This is not something which I can change. This is disturbance. This is disturbance. Okay. Here, this flow is something different. This flow, there is a knob. There is a wall which you can operate automatically. Okay, I have this device here. This is called as a control wall. So this control wall, this control wall, I can send a signal here to this control wall, and I can open or close this wall. Typically, these devices are electromechanical, so there could be a motor. You send, a, you send a signal to the motor, open the wall 50%, it will open the wall 50%. If you say, close it to 0%, it will close the wall. You can operate, operate it between 0 to 100% opening, or fractional opening between 0 to 1. So this wall can be manipulated by an operator. Of course, this liquid might be at very high temperature, or it might be at stored at a high pressure. So you are not going to stand there and do it by hand. Okay, so these devices are very huge, and then you may have some electromechanical device that actually uh, changes the flows. What is the use of this particular flow? This particular flow, I'm going to use as a manipulated input. So I can manipulate this flow. If I can manipulate this flow, if I can manipulate this flow, well, what is my task? What do I want to achieve? What I want to achieve is that this level here, this level here, I'm going to call this level as H. Okay, I want to maintain level inside this tank constant as far as possible in the face of fluctuations coming from this FD. This FD is actually supposed to be at some at some steady state, but it never has steady state. We find that it is actually fluctuating. It is fluctuating in some complex manner. Okay, so this is FD. Oh, so this is FD versus time. If I don't do anything, if I don't do anything, let's say this this ball is open 50 percent. This ball is kept open 50 percent, and then certain flow. Fi is coming in. Right now, no mixing of A and B. Same, assume simple thing. Just mixing of water. Okay? This is water, this is water. I have, you know, water level to be maintained inside this tank. Okay. The flow out here, flow out here, what is, what is it governed by? <coughs> Yeah, root 2 gh. So I can write this sum constant times square root h. Is it okay? I'll skip g here now. So I'm just writing some k square root h. Okay. So this is this is a this is a uh, system which is you know the flow increases if the level increases. Flow decreases if the level decreases. Okay, flow increases if the level increases, flow decreases if the level decreases. So this is a this is a system which is acts on uh, you know the current content inside the inside the tank. So let's write the material balance. So if I write the material balance, d rho v by dt is equal to fi plus fd minus fo. Is everyone with me on this? Yeah? So now uh, I'm going to assume that this area here 
area of cross section is A, constant. Very, very simplified problem. Okay, let's uh, let's take these as volumetric flow rates. So rho Fd plus rho. Okay. Density is constant. I'm going to cancel the density. What I'll get is an equation. Now, when you write normal chemical engineering problem uh, models, you typically ignore rate of change of volume. In control, I am not going to ignore this. I want to manage transients. I cannot ignore the H by dt. I am going to consider it. I am going to retain it and then I want to manipulate things. See now, the equation that I get now is B H by dt is equal to Fi plus Fd minus K square root h. Is that right? So this is my this is my differential equation that relates rate of change of volume, ah is volume, rate of change of volume at any time point is governed by flow in this inlet flow i plus disturbance flow minus the flow out. Okay? This differential equation governs the dynamics of this particular time. Okay? And then my aim is to control the level inside the tank automatically. Okay? I want to control the level inside the tank automatically. I want to I want to introduce a device called controller. Okay? You might have heard about uh, you know aircraft being being flying on an autopilot. This word you hear, no? Autopilot. Autopilot is a controller which actually uh, takes decision as to how to fly the aircraft. Okay, in some sense, I want to design an autopilot for this particular tank. I want, I want another device which, without my intervention, will manage level inside the tank. How do I do that? Okay, that's the question. <coughs> so now let's see how to do it because we have to manipulate the dynamics we have to work with the differential equation. So we have to actually now start playing with this differential equation and make sure that it maintains the level and the desired, desired set point. Okay. So now what I have said here is this flow here, flow here is something that I can manipulate. Okay. Let's take a very, very simple relationship. Let's take a relationship that Fi is equal to some constant, this theta is a constant, times u, okay? And u here is my fractional opening. This is my fractional opening, u is fractional opening, so u can vary between 0 and 1. 1 is wall full open, 0 is wall fully closed, 0.5 is wall 50% open, and so on. So this is my, this is my Manipulation. I can actually change this. Okay. So my differential equation now becomes a dh by dt plus k square root h is equal to fi. Fi is now delta times u plus fd e. This is my differential equation. If you go back to your first year where you are done courses in Differential equations. This is the ordinary differential equation, first order. Is it a linear differential equation? It's not a linear differential equation. That's the unfortunate part. There's a square root edge coming here. Okay. So, and then right hand side, in the mass course, we call this forcing functions. Okay. In our context, these are inputs. Okay. So these are your, in mass course, these are called as forcing functions. Okay. But these are inputs to my system. One of them I can manipulate, one of them I don't have a control. I cannot do anything about this flow. I can change this flow. So my task is to change this flow in such a way that effect of this flow on level is nullified. Is that clear? Can you tell me what, what I said just now? Yeah. I don't want to change the level of FI. I have decided that the level of this level here, I have decided that this HT should always be equal to HS. So this is 
Sir, we have to change the levels, so should we have to make that disturbance coming that uh, Somebody can correct him? Uh, we have to change one of the uh, components, one of the inputs, so that the level... Which input? I cannot change this input. We have to control the SI such that the... I have to control, I have to manipulate, we don't use control. I have to manipulate SI to control level. Okay? I have to manipulate SI. Let's take an example of a motorcycle. What do you control? Speed. Speed. Okay. And? And? What is speed? Direction. What are the manipulated inputs? Throttle and? Angle. So you are steering angle. And? Brakes. There are three inputs, three manipulated variables. I am translating it into the terminology of control. There are three manipulated variables, brakes, accelerator, and steering. Okay. I have two controlled variables, speed and direction. Okay. What are the disturbances? What could what could perturb your speed? Ah. So we are driving from Bombay to Pune. Friction. Friction. Okay. Air resistance. Wind gusts. If I have winds, if I have wind, if I have strong wind, I have to accelerate in a different way. If I have slow wind, I have to accelerate in a different way. If it rains, the road becomes slippery, the friction changes, the way I control my system has to be different. Okay. Okay, so now, now just think of doing this using a computer. I don't want, I don't want a driver sitting there. You are too intelligent to do it. You know how to drive from here to Pune. I want to teach a computer to do this. Okay, and that's a tough task because if you want to design a system in which an equation takes decision as to how to drive, okay, then you have to be careful. You have to design it very well. That's what we want to do. Except. I don't have a motorcycle, I have a level tank and I don't want to control speed, I want to control level inside, okay? So, uh, and well, you might ask why not Why not write equations for motorcycle? I can do that, but it will be too complex. So let's understand one simple thing and then see how you go ahead. Okay, so are you with me on this? I have this equation which I have to manipulate. Okay, now, now if I ask you to control the if I, if I ask you to sit next to this tank, there is let's say a glass tank and you can view the level, okay? And you are given this knob, just like you know, your uh, fan, uh, fan regulator. You have this knob and you can turn and open or close the wall. Okay, how do you think about changing the wall position? What is the logic? You have some set level, let's call it HS. You have some desired level in your mind, okay? What do you do? How do you, whether you open 5% or 10%, whether you close 5% or 10% or 15%, what does it depend upon? The level which we And? Level which we and what, what is important for you is difference between the current level and HS. The set level or desired level. So what I keep observing when I actually control it is I am keep observing I keep observing this signal okay this is set level this is my something that is in my mind I want to control or I have come from the design and I have said that the level should be 70% full of this time and then this is the current level I look at this difference and how much I change it depends upon it depends upon this difference. If this difference is more, I'll open the wall more. If this one is small, I'll open the wall less. Right? Let me design an automatic control law, an equation that will do this without you being or you doing it by hand. Okay, so let's take this UT. Okay. I'm going to call the level. I'm going to call see. If I maintain, if my FD is, let's say this is my, this is my 
FD bar. This FD bar is the design value, steady state value, where this flow should be exactly. Okay, if FD is equal to FD bar, then U is equal to U bar. Suppose FD is equal to FD bar, U is equal to U bar, then level exactly is at HS. So this is my steady state. Steady state when dh by dt is equal to zero. Let's take this situation where u bar is the value, is the ball position, for which when fd is equal to fd bar, level is exactly at hs. Okay. Now, what I'm going to say is that the difference between u t and u bar is going to be some constant. I am designing a control law, I am introducing a new equation. If I use this equation, actually I am translating what I would be doing by hand. Okay. And if I somehow can introduce this equation into this system, if I can measure level and automatically manipulate voltage going to this motor, okay, I am done. I don't have to be sitting there watching the level. Okay, I will have a level measurement. I will compare it with, I will compare it to the set level, multiplied by some gain, decide what should be the opening, okay, and I will say my ut should be u bar plus kc into hs minus ht. Is that okay? I will say that at any time t, the flow rate should be governed by this equation. And flow rate should be governed by this equation. Okay, now actually what you are doing is a little dangerous business. Why? I'll tell you that. Uh, while doing this, by doing this, you are actually meddling with the dynamics. Okay, you are changing dynamics of the system because you are introducing one more equation into this system. So now the overall system is governed by this differential equation and this equation. These two are coupled equations, are they? Look at look at this. H rate of change of level changes according to this equation, but U changes according to H. So these two are coupled equations. You have to solve them together. Okay? You have to solve them together. So how do I do that? <coughs> Okay, so now let's let's look at let's look at combined equation. I'll just substitute this with this and look at the combined equation. My combined equation looks like a dh by dt. Um, plus k square root h is equal to delta into u bar plus kc hs minus h plus fd this is my this is my transformed equation this is my transformed equation okay and this transformed equation what is it supposed to do this transformed equation will automatically decide what should be the input flow rate just based on the level. How I can do this? Well, you have done a course on basic uh, E101. Okay, you know, you can take a measurement of level as pressure drop. You can convert it into an electrical signal, say voltage or current. Let's say you convert to a voltage. You can compare it to voltages through comparator circuit. Okay, you can multiply the difference by a gain of amp. Okay, and then find out what should be U T. Okay, send it back to this wall, give the wall position, and set the wall position. So you could devise some way of doing this. Let's not worry about how to do it right now. Let's assume that there is some way of designing a circuit 
which actually will implement your controller, automatic controller. So this is my autopilot for this particular system. Okay, now my job is to pick up this value KC. Okay, how much do I change when level changes by 5%? How much do I change when the level changes by minus 7%? I will make a call by appropriately choosing this value of KC because how I choose KC decides how the system now behaves. Okay, so what we have done now is that we have actually modified the dynamics. The modified dynamics looks like this A dh by dt plus k square root h. Uh, let me take this on this side. Nita KC h is equal to Is this fine? So now what I have done is I have actually modified the differential equation by adding one more term. I have modified. So physically what I am going to do is something like this. Physically what I am going to do is I am going to have a level measurement here. A level transmitter. LT stands for level transmitter. I am going to have a controller device. This is called as LC is an electronic device which is a controller. This controller will decide what should be the opening here. This will decide what should be the wall opening. Okay, I have actually added an autopilot to my level system. This autopilot will receive only value of HS, the steady state where you want to maintain. It will keep changing the wall position. It will keep changing the wall position as long as as long as the level is not equal to the level is not equal to HS. It will keep changing the wall position. So this is an automatic controller. The trouble is I get a differential equation which is nonlinear. It's very hard to work with nonlinear differential equations. How will this modified differential equation behave? It depends upon what is the value of KC that you choose? Okay? What is the value of KC that you choose? If you start making, I mean, very, very qualitative analysis, if you start making, you know, if you just see the level has changed by 1%, if you take a drastic measure, if you open the wall by a large amount, if you see the level has decreased by 1%, if you close the wall, I mean, whatever. Okay? If you do large control actions, what can happen? which means you are choosing large KC value, then instead of controlling the level, the level can start oscillating. Okay, and you can get into a situation where the water will start overflowing. Okay, you don't want that to happen. So how do you choose KC is the key problem. The controller design problem that we are going to study in this course is how do I introduce additional equation, which is called controller, into the dynamics, and then I have certain free parameters, I am abstracting the whole thing. I have certain free parameters, in this case there is only one parameter. I have to choose this free parameter in such a way that the dynamics of the modified system is nice, is stable, is non-oscillatory. Okay, that is my that is my task. And doing it for a non-linear differential equation is a tough business. What we know very well is linear differential equation. Right? We know linear differential equation very well. We know how to solve them analytically. Right? In JE, you could do it even just looking at it. Ah, I can write e to the board. Blah, 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 blah. Right? So linear differential equations are very well understood. Okay. So if somehow, if somehow, whole thing would be cast as a linear differential equation problem, things would be very easy. Right? But unfortunately, this square root h is creating a problem. So can I do something? to get over this. What we do is a standard trick of Taylor series expansion. What we do is we argue that for small perturbations, for small perturbations, this differential equation I can actually approximate as a linear differential equation. Okay? And this linear differential equation then you can use in combination with this control law. Okay? And that combined thing then, you know, you can analyze because it's a linear differential equation. This is a linear control law. That's a linear differential equation. Both things put together, you get 
uh, another linear differential equation. Okay, and you know how to manipulate linear differential equations. Okay, so my next task is going to be converting this differential equation into linear differential equation. Okay, is everyone with me on this? So I'll proceed uh, now. So I somehow want linear differential equations and I have a non-linear differential equation. So I have this differential equation D And then combine the two. Okay, by the way, those of you who are not interested want to chat and do it outside. He's recording it, right? So, recording will be available. You can just walk out, I'm not going to say anything. Okay. So, if you don't find this interesting, don't have to be here. <coughs> no problem. Okay, so uh, if you want to be here, please bear with me. This, this guy, I want to somehow convert into a linear differential equation. And I'm going to make use of the fact that if I'm already at the steady state, and if I do small perturbations around the steady state, the small perturbations will behave as if they are governed by linear differential equations. How do I find that out? Okay, so now uh, I have already said that these are my steady state values. So at steady state A d h bar by dt plus k square root h bar is equal to u this is the differential equation satisfied at the steady state right at the steady state this is zero actually rate of change of level is zero at the steady state okay and this this equation governs so i want to actually linearize this I want to linearize this differential equation in the neighborhood of the steady state h bar, u bar, f d bar. Let's see how I'm going to do that. Okay, if I have a function f of x, if I have a function f of x, okay, I can approximate it locally as f of x bar plus do f by do x. This is a local linear approximation coming from Taylor series expansion. Right? This is something which you know, single scalar variable, one variable Taylor series. Okay, I'm going to apply this. I'm going to apply this particularly to the nonlinear term here, and then convert the differential equation, which is originally nonlinear, into an approximate local linear differential equation. So how do I do this? So this term a square root h. I can approximate this as k square root h bar plus what is derivative of this with respect to h? So it will be k by 2 square root h bar, right? This is the local derivative into, into h minus h minus h bar. Okay. Let's call this as delta h. Let's call this as delta h. Okay. So this term, this term in the differential equation, I'm going to replace by this approximation. Approximation. This is constant. H bar is constant. So k root h bar is constant. This is constant because h bar is constant, and this is h minus h bar. Okay. So let's see how it helps me. Okay, so let's let's look at uh, now other terms. What about what about u? This theta is a constant, 
u t, I can write this as u bar plus u t minus u bar. So that is u bar plus delta u bar. Perturbations. Perturbations in the neighborhood of the steady state. Okay, but what you know is that k square root h is equal to neta u bar, so neta u bar comes here, plus fd bar, so fd bar comes here. Okay, we already know that this is equal to this, and this derivative is equal to zero, so actually this will cancel with this term, right? This will cancel with this term and this term. This will cancel with these terms. Okay, so what remains? We want to have a look over this again. Anyone? Is it okay? No doubts? Okay. Okay, so my equation now is E delta H by dt plus k by 2 square root h bar delta h is equal to delta u plus delta fd. This particular model is called as perturbation model. It relates perturbations, it relates perturbations in the wall position, perturbations in the inlet flow, with the perturbations in the level, in the neighborhood of the steady state h bar. Okay, this is called a perturbation model. So this is a linear, is this a linear differential equation? This is a linear differential equation. Okay, this is a constant term, this is a constant term, this is a constant, this is a linear differential equation. We know what to solve this. Right, so this is, this is a linear OD, also called linear perturbation model. How do you solve this? <laughs> what is integrating factor? Yeah. So let me put it in the standard form, it looks a little better. So I will just divide this and say that a uh, 2a square root h bar by k So I'm trying to put it in the standard form that you probably know from your first year or maybe JE, whatever. So then I'm calling this, I'm going to call this as tau. Okay? I'm going to call this as KP. I'm going to call this as KD. Okay? So what I have done is I have actually come up with a simplified model. I come up with a simplified model which now looks like this. How d delta h I don't know how it is <laughs> What I have done is through Taylor series approximation, I have come up with a model which is simplified. Okay, this is a linear differential equation, and we know perfectly well how to how to manipulate things in the linear differential equation. But so now, from now on, I'm going to forget that I started with a non-linear differential equation. I'm just going to work with this linear differential equation because it's very easy to manipulate. And then So my argument now is going to be for small perturbations, this particular system, for small perturbations in level, small perturbations 
in the disturbance, small perturbation in the this wall. This particular system, right now I am not talking about the controller at all. Just I am talking about a system in which there is no controller introduced. Open loop system, as it's called in control. It behaves according to this simplified linear differential equation. Okay, so if I have to solve this in time, how do you do this? E to the power. So I I put this as you know uh, d delta h by dt plus one by tau delta h is equal to dt by tau. So I can write, uh, I'll directly write the solution, I think you know the solution. Delta HP is equal to e to the power minus T by tau delta H0 plus integral 0 to T something, 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 right? What is it? And this control law, I want to now combine this control law 
I want to combine this control law with my differential equation, and then I want to decide what should be KC. Okay. So what I'm going to do is to play a trick because here I have only perturbation values, and this control law doesn't seem to have any perturbation values. So I'm going to modify this control law slightly. Not really modify. I'm going to rewrite this as KC into HS minus H bar minus HT minus H bar. Okay, so this is U bar plus KC into delta HS minus delta H. Is this okay? All that I have done is I have written this in terms of delta H. Now I can I can combine this equation. I can combine this equation. So delta ut is equal to ut minus u bar that is equal to kc into delta hs minus delta h this is finally my control law so what is the difference between hs and h bar <laughs> so i may want to maintain the level at my hs could be equal to h bar simple way sometimes Sometimes I have designed the tank to operate at 70 percent, but for some reason I want to operate at 50 percent. So I might decide to change HS to be different, but my H bar is designed well. Okay. To begin with, if you don't want to get confused, you can say that HS is equal to H bar. Okay. Then this becomes then this becomes zero. Okay. But it need not be. I am just taking a general case. That HS need not be equal to. Okay, so now I'm going to combine this. I'm going to combine this. If you have those of you who have notebooks, just try this. So, what is the what is the modified differential equation? This is the equation when there was no controller. <coughs> this is the equation now. I have introduced the controller. The controller is this part. This is my controller. Okay. What is the modified differential equation? The modified differential equation. The modified differential equation will be differential equation. I have just combined, I have just combined controller, this is my control law. This particular controller this simple controller is called as proportional controller. It is just proportional to the difference between the desired and the measured well. Okay? Your action is proportional by a constant to the difference between desired and measured. So it's called the proportional controller. Okay? I have just introduced the proportional controller. Proportional controller introduction modifies the differential equation like this. So so the modified differential equation is tau 1 plus AC AP. <coughs> ok, 
Okay? This is my modified differential equation. This is my modified differential equation. Okay? Now, solution of this modified, now, now it will be clear why I've been doing all this generally in maths. Okay, this modified differential equation, solution of this modified differential equation will be governed by will be governed by coefficients of this modified differential equation. Okay. Now, coefficients of this modified differential equation will depend upon Kc. Will depend upon Kc. Kc is something which I am going to choose. I am going to introduce this control law. Okay. So, if I put a wrong value of Kc, it can upset the can upset the differential equation. For example, uh, if I choose a value of Kc such that this becomes negative, when it's supposed to be positive, I'll have trouble. So I should be careful. <coughs> So I should be careful, I should be careful when I choose KC. Okay, so what you can appreciate is that the solution what you can appreciate is that solution of this modified differential equation solution of this modified differential equation will be governed by will be governed by uh, delta ht will be e to the power minus t do you see this term which is appearing here okay now now earlier earlier when there was no controller introduced what mattered was e to the power minus t by tau okay now what matters is e to the power this term this additional term has been introduced because you have put this controller which is proportional controller which automatically decides what should be the flow rate and this choice actually can be detrimental if you make a wrong choice for example what will happen if if this value somehow becomes negative, what will happen? If, if you by mistake choose Kc value in such a way that this whole thing becomes negative, this will go to infinity. Okay, which means the level will start growing. You make a mistake, level will start growing. You know, you cannot afford this because the water will spill or whatever. The, the level is actually not going to go to infinity. The volume will be finite and the water will spill and you have problems. So, how do you choose Kc is the crux, is controller design. How do I choose Kc such that, now, what should be my goal? My goal should be that I choose Kc in such a way that the perturbations in level are as small as possible when the flow rate Fd fluctuates. Okay, I choose Kc. All this you will study in the design course. Okay, but the aim of the experiment, now let me come back to the aim of the experiment. Aim of the experiment for the control is for a given particular system, you want to find out what should be value of Kc. That is the aim of this particular lab. Okay, I want to find out what should be the aim, what, what should be the value of Kc. In fact, you are going to use one more advanced controller. This simple controller is called a proportional controller. There will be one more controller called as proportional integral controller which we will be using. So there will be one more term coming up, there will be one more constant. And how do you decide those constants such that such that this, this transient is managed properly? One simple way of design is to say, one simple way of design is to say that this term, this term, okay. This term should be equal to some prefixed desired value. Okay, so I decide that tau tau design is a desired value. Okay, and this should be equated to okay. If I know that this should be positive, I choose this to be a positive value. Okay, I know tau. I know Kp, I do not know Kc. 
I can find out KC from this. So how do you, or let's let's call this instead of design, let's call this design. Okay, what is the relationship now? If you know tau, if you know KP, what will be the value of KC? Can you just tell me? From this equation? Is, is everyone with me on this? See the dynamics of the closed loop, that means dynamics of dynamics of this this level tank together with this controller is driven by this combined differential equation. This combined differential equation. What matters in this combined differential equation is the coefficients. Okay, my task is to manipulate the coefficients of the differential equation in such a way that the transient of level is as I want. Okay, so what I can do is I can say that this this term seems to govern how it behaves. I'm saying that this is equal to tau desired. Okay, I know tau, I know kp, I can find out kc. Okay, so what will be kc? 1 by tau tau minus tau desired by kp right what is 1 by kp is that what you get Right? This is what you get. This is what you get. So you are pre-defining what should be tau desired, and you are getting the controller game. This is called as controller design. Okay. So what you are going to do in this particular set of experiments is that first thing that you are going to do is to develop a model of this form. First task. So there are two experiments. Experiment one, experiment two. In experiment one, what you are going to do is to first coming up. From this, from this plant, I want to come up with this model, which is of this form. That is the task one. Okay. Task two is to decide what should be value of Kc. Task two is to decide what should be value of Kc. I have given you a very simplified description of how to design Kc. There will be more sophisticated methods that will be taught to you how to design Kc. But roughly the idea is this, that you want to shape the dynamics of this system together with the controller so that together they form a stable system. If I put an autopilot on the aircraft, it should fly at a desired height. Okay, it should not go off, should not go to infinity, it should not of course go down. Okay, it should maintain the level. That's what I want. Okay, so how I choose the controller is what decides how the closed loop dynamics is. So first part, first part is actually develop a model of this form. Second part is to develop a control law, actually implement this control law on a level time setup that we have. We have slightly more complex setups than what I have described here. So you have to actually implement that control law on the level time or the, there is a water heater system, there is a level time system. So you have to actually implement those control laws on those systems and see how is the closed loop behavior. Compare the closed loop behavior that you predict from your equations. From these equations I can actually predict how the system is going to behave. Actually, I am doing my design using a linear differential equation. The true system is non-linear. The true plant is non-linear. So there is going to be a difference and you have to observe a difference. Okay. Linear differential equation is a tool that I use to do a design. Okay, and this this particular exercise will give you a controller. Ideally, it should behave exactly like this differential equation, combined differential equation. Here it doesn't behave like that because the real plant is non-linear, and you have to actually perform an experiment, go back and see how good is your design. Okay, now only the last part. Maybe on the five minutes I'll close this. The big problem here is this step. How do you how do you do this? If I if you ask me to develop this model, if you ask me to develop this model, I started from a differential equation, nonlinear differential equation, and then I linearized it. Okay. I linearized it. Now this is a difficult task. 
Because first of all, for a given system, I have to develop a nonlinear differential equation model, okay, which obeys the or which behaves like the plant, which is very very difficult. I am not going to use those kind of models to come up with this approximation. Are there different ways? Are there different uh, methods of coming up with approximation? That's what we are going to look at. Okay. What we are going to do is qualitatively similar to what a doctor does uh, when you go and meet him. See, there are two ways a doctor can model a patient. One is, you know, uh, ask him to do test A, B, C, do an X-ray, do CAT scan, do MRI, to see inside what is happening, you know, and then uh, come up with a model that would be like what I said in the first. You know, start with uh, energy balance or material balance and write differential equations, linearize them. All that is fine if you if you have those kind of models, but many times you don't have those models. So when you go to the doctor, first thing he says, okay, you say it's pain in here. So, you know, he just presses there. <laughs> right? That he presses there. Then you make a sound. Okay, then he will keep pressing to the point where you suddenly make ouch. <laughs> So then he knows that this is where there is a problem. Okay, so this this is like pinching the system. Okay, observing the response. See, this is this kind of models you develop. For example, most of you are driving uh, motorcycles, right? Not allowed in the campus. Outside, during summer, yeah, you drive motorcycles. Okay, and many of you might be driving cars. Okay, do you have to be an automobile engineer to drive a car? We don't have to. Okay, but every time you take a new motorcycle, what is it that you do? What is the first thing? The first thing that you do is to test it. How? What is the test? You first accelerate and just check if that jolt is there, right? The second thing that you do is you try to break it, and then you see at what distance it stops. Actually, when you are doing these tests, you are developing a mathematical model, a perturbation model in your mind. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the brain is far more superior than what you can actually do it using a computer. So you are developing a model, a quantitative differential equation. Believe me. <laughs> so you you have you have some idea about how fast. <laughs> See, one of the things here that are important. This is sensitivity. This is sensitivity. Okay. And this is the time scale. There are two things that you check when you when you are driving. One is the sensitivity, other is the time scale. At what distance it stops or how fast it takes off. Time scale. Tau. Okay. How sensitive it is. If I if I change it slightly, how much it goes ahead? If I change it more, how much it goes ahead? These parameters, gains. So if I if I want to drive a motorcycle, I just need two parameters, time scale and sensitivities. To do this, I do a test which is a step test. I just give a step change, observe a behavior, develop a model. That's what we are going to do when you do the modeling part. What you are going to do is that you are going to have a system with two inputs. You are going to have a system with two inputs. You are going to keep one input constant. Okay. Suppose I keep this input constant, so this is zero. I don't change this, this is held at a constant value. What I do is, I give a change here, I give a change here in this, from u equal to u bar to u is equal to u bar plus delta u. I give a change. Okay, for this particular change, I can analytically write that delta xt should be kp 1 minus p by tau. I can write an analytical expression. I can write an analytical expression for this. Okay? And then what I can show is that kp is equal to If I wait for a long time, when I write infinity here, you're not going to wait for infinite time. You're going to wait for a long time, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. So you, find, you can show that as, as what happens as t goes to infinity? As t goes to infinity, this term becomes zero. So this will be kp times delta u. 
Okay, so Kp is just delta h by delta u. I don't have to go from physics, right, material balance to linearization. I don't have to do that. To just get Kp, I just do an experiment. I give a step change in the level. Okay, when I give a step change in the level, when I give a step change in the level, see my my u. So this is this is when I give a step change in my level. I'm going to do an experiment in which I introduce a step change here. There is no controller. I just I just open this wall, say from 50% to 60%. So this is my this is my change. Okay. I record the the height versus time diagram. I just record u versus time diagram. My gain is simply ratio of this final level difference by Sensitivity. This is just sensitivity. And how do I find out tau? I found out. I find out tau is. <laughs> so to find out tau. I just have to find out a time required to reach 63% of the final value. So I introduce the change here. Suppose it 63% value is this. So this time, this time difference is tau. This I can derive from this equation. If this is uh, t is equal to tau, at t is equal to tau, at t is equal to tau, this will become this will become uh, how much? Just find out. <laughs> so sixty three percent of the time required to go to the sixty three percent of the final value will give me tau. So what is done actually when you do or design a controller in a chemical plant is that you don't many times start from physics, right? Differential equations, right? Models that is very very complex. You develop models like like you develop a model for a motorbike or a doctor develops a model for you just by trial and error that they do well here, right? Something doesn't work, they give one medicine, if that doesn't work, you have another medicine. And then they see your response. They ask you to come and report next, after three days come and tell me what happens. Actually they are looking at a step response. Okay. So so it is it is it is a model which can be used to control the system. Mind you, doctor is able to treat you many cases. Okay, just looking at very approximate models. The same thing holds here. You can actually control the plant using these approximate models developed using just step responses. So your control experiments. So just bear with me for another five minutes. Then you can continue your chat outside. Okay. So now your control experiments are going to be two turns, and actually there are three control experiments. So two turns are actually on the experimental setup. Okay, one turn is just simulation. In simulation turn, you are going to do everything that you would do on the real setup. That means you take a differential equation, simulate it, and call it as a plant. Okay, then you introduce a step change in the input, record the output, model it as an approximate first order differential equation or second order differential equation, whatever the case may be. Okay, design the controller, implement the controller. Everything in MATLAB in simulation and see how it works. That will give you an ideal world picture. Okay. Then you just go back to the plant. Okay. You do a step test, develop a model. This is turn number one. Okay. You develop a model for a particular system, give step test or give step change or poke the system. There are two inputs in every every of the systems. So poke one of them, keep the other constant, develop a model. Okay, keep the first one constant, poke the other one, change the other one, develop a model. This is the, this is turn one. So at the end of the turn one, you have developed this model. Both you have found out tau k 
KTKD. That's what we have found out at the end of term one. Then, using these values, you can design the controller, which means you can find out what should be the KC value or whatever the controller parameters that you have designed. Then, you take those controller parameters. We have a computer controlled setups. So the controller is implemented through a computer. The device that actually implements this, com uh, this controller in a modern chemical plant is nothing done by hand. Everything is a com computer control system. And mind you, it's a very, very exciting area because you are dealing with real-time data online. Thousands of measurements coming all the time from the plant and you have to design a complex algorithm that manipulates maintains the chem complex chemical plant at you know, whatever desired level. Your pressures, temperatures, very high pressures, very high temperatures. It's an extremely complex system, lot of interactions. Everything is now done using a mathematical model sitting in a computer. It is, there is an autopilot, there is an autopilot if you want to call it, and it can actually run a plant without an operator. How to design it is our task. Okay, but to understand that, we will start simple. We will start from simple tank and then manipulate or extrapolate the ideas to more complex systems. So, our task finally is to design this complex controller which is automatic, can run a plant without operator, okay, under normal conditions. This is not possible when you start up the plant or shut down the plant, but it's like aircraft again. Aircraft startup that is flying in and then you know, landing is typically done by the pilot, but when you are cruising at a particular height, that is done by an autopilot. That can be done by a computer control. Fly by wire. All of you know this word, fly by wire? No? Fly by wire is a, all these uh, Airbus series. They actually do a, you know, wireless computer control systems. Which So, actually, uh, a modern chemical plant is a fly by wire or a wireless. Uh, computer control system, which is managed completely by the computer, except startup and shutdown. Okay, so this is so this this models which you develop by simple pinching, they are useful for design of controller. To design the controller, actually test it how it works. Okay, that is end of this two two stage uh, process. So first one, you do everything in simulation. Then two stages, you first design. Uh, you come up with a model, which is approximate, use the model, design the controller, implement it on the real system, and see how it works. Okay, now this special lecture I gave because this is all that you are going to do in the entire course, but it becomes pretty complex because a lot of maths is involved. It is not so easy to do it, and it requires many, many lectures to come up with how to design it properly. I try to oversimplify it. <laughs> so some of the things which I said, you will realize them towards the end of the course, what, what it meant. But um, if you have any doubts, please ask me right now. After say about a month or so, those of you who are going to do the experiments will realize what is happening. First one month, what I am saying, you have to rely upon this because many of you will not have a clue why you are giving a step test. What is this controller design equation? You will be given some equation say that this is a controller design. Why is this controller design equation? It will become clear probably you know, in October. Okay. So, <laughs> So, so just uh, uh, any any questions that I can answer? Any doubts? No. Okay. Thank you.